we've got some wood. just fit in here. What's happening guys? Welcome back to the workshop. Now it's been a really busy week. I haven't had time to get a project finished this week and get something uploaded but what I have had time to do is go get some materials for a upcoming project. So there's going to be a resin table build. So in this video I want to take you through all the materials that I've picked up take you through some of the ideas that I have coming up from this build. I've been in contact with a company, MID Glass Fiber Suppliers. They are going to help me out with the glass, with the resin for this build, which is absolutely fantastic. The guys, they are really, really nice and are excited to get behind the project. So they've sent me down a little sample kit that I want to show you guys. So I'm going to have to learn how to use this epoxy stuff. I'm going to have a play around with it, see how it goes. And I know some of you guys have contacted me already saying you want an in-depth, um, video on how to use this epoxy. So that's what I intend to do. I want to do a step-by-step -step how to build an epoxy table. I'm going to start off with a small coffee table and that will be the plan for the upcoming project. I have some new tools on the way which I'll tell you about as well. So yeah, in this video we're going to take a look at all that stuff. So let's get a look at some of this live edge timber that I went and got and I'll show you that uh, little epoxy sample kit that I've got and I'll explain to you about the guys at Glass Fiber too. So let's do it. Right, so like I was saying, I took a spin this week to get some live edge stuff. So I found a guy in Torless in Tipperary who planks his own stuff, has his own mill at his house. Really, really nice guy. Uh, makes his own guitars and mandolins as well. He has an ad on adverts.ie. If you're in Ireland and you're looking for somewhere where you can get some live edge stuff, go check it out. If you just search uh, Timber Planks, you'll see his ad will come up. It's got loads of comments on it. So that's where I went and got this stuff. He's got some nice stuff, some nice oak, ash, and some spotted beach and all that kind of good stuff. So an absolute gentleman to deal with. So um, yeah, I have some flame sycamore here, I have some spotted beech, and I have some oak. So let's take a look at that. And just as I hit record, all the machinery starts going behind my shop, but the farmers have to farm, so there might be a bit of noise in the background, but we'll deal with it. So let's have a look. Okay, first up is this piece of oak. Now this is the piece of oak that I'm planning on using for the resin table build. So I'm gonna cut this in half and make a coffee table from it. Now this side has a lot of rot in it, so there's a lot of holes and stuff, a lot of flaky material that needs to be cleaned out. It's not much good for anything other than maybe doing a resin table, but it would be really nice as a resin table. So what the plan is, is to take this section here and put it in a mold and put resin on either side to square it up and then to fill these holes with resin. I'm thinking maybe a nice copper metallic resin, something like that, um, to do this coffee table. So this is what the, the upcoming project is going to be, hopefully. So we're going to have to take these boards and flatten them. So I'd say the next project we're going to work on is going to be building a router sled or flattening jig that we can assemble, take apart, and we can use it for any size planks. That's going to be the next project as soon as some tools that I've ordered arrived. And this will be the first resin build in. So again, it's a nice piece of oak. It's kind of a go golden oak so it's not white oak it might be brown oak I think but it has a lovely golden color and I think it's going to make a really nice coffee table so this is the first piece we have so yeah this will be my very first resin table build and I will go in depth into it from start to finish so we'll have a whole series on it from building the sled to flatten live edge boards to pouring the resin to doing all that work that's the plan so let's look at some more stuff Right, this is the next piece I picked up, and this is a piece of beech. It has some spalting in it. It was cut from a crotch, as you can see, so we have um, a kind of a Y shape here where the tree was splitting out into two branches, and it has some spalting, so we can see some figure in it here, and we have some nice fungus patterns. Now, how much this will remain when we flatten it, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how deep it goes, but it's definitely an interesting pattern. So I think the idea with this is to leave it live edge and I might fill the cracks with a nice resin, maybe a kind of a gold in color resin, something like that, just some nice handy pores just to fill up all these cracks. And we're gonna use it for a top of a computer table. Now I have a computer table inside, it's a relatively cheap one, um, just where I edit all my videos and stuff, but I really make, like to put a live edge top on it. So that's gonna be an upcoming video where we're gonna upcycle some old uh, cheap kind of computer desk, put a really nice live edge top on it and uh, see what comes from it. So again, we will add some resin to this. Not too much, I think, on this one. We're gonna keep like a nice live edge on it and uh, see what way we're gonna finish it. So this is gonna be an, another upcoming project and that's another piece of wood that we have. Okay, next up we have two big flamed sycamore slabs. So these are the really nice pieces that I've got and I intend to make a kitchen table out of one of these or maybe both. I'm not sure how it's gonna go yet, but 
it's definitely going to be some resin involved in this project. Now I want to start with a small coffee table first so I can get some practice and get the whole system down before I even attempt anything like this. So this will be a couple of months time. I'm going to let these boards acclimatize now to the workshop. They've been drying for a few years. The moisture content is already really low in them. So they haven't too much more to go. So um, in the next couple of weeks, I think that oak will be ready and we can start our coffee table build. But these ones are going to be for our nice kitchen table build. We might even get two kitchen tables out of these. We'll see um, one of them resin, maybe one of them live edge. I'm not 100% sure yet, but I definitely know I want to get a kitchen table out of one of them anyway and do a resin build. So that's going to be an upcoming project. It's a really nice um, flamed sycamore. We have lots of cracks and splits in it, but again, if we fill that with resin, we can get a really nice, beautiful table out of this, I reckon. So that's going to be the plan for these guys. So what we need to do now is leave these acclimatized in the shop for a week or two, like I was saying. Now they've been drying for a few years, so the moisture content is pretty low with them. I got myself a little moisture meter. This one is from RS. I'll give you a close up of it now in a second. It was only 14 quid, so it's nice and cheap. Um, you can pay a couple of hundred euros for one of these if you want one that will measure specific wood types. So you can actually set the type of wood that you're testing. But really, this will just give you a little indication. And you can test it against other timbers that you've had in your shop for a while. And as long as you're getting consistent readings throughout the board, you know that you're within the ballpark. And this one says plus or minus 2%. So you can kind of guesstimate by what's in your shop already and what you've just brought into the shop, roughly where the moisture levels are. So these are reading at about 15% at the minute. I'd like to get them down to about 12 percent but I think this could be reading about two percent high I've tested it against other woods in the shop and they are reading about 12 percent so I reckon they should be down around around 10 percent they've been in the shop a long time and it's killing dry timber I'll show you all that now in a second so I reckon it's, it's about two percent high probably this meter but it's consistent across the board so I need to let this dry for a week or two just to get one or two percent down furniture grade stuff should be down around nine percent but once you're down 12% and below, you're probably pretty good for working on timber in my book. So um, yeah, let's have a close up of this. So you can see there we're reading at about 15%, 14, 15%. That's pretty consistent throughout this whole board. And if I get some other pieces of timber, so I have some pieces of peely, this is kiln dried stuff and it's been in the shop for a while. So you can see that's reading about 14%. So I reckon this is probably 2% a bit high. Here's some maple, again, 14% some ash and I know this stuff is really dry that's down around 13 percent so this board is not too far off again it's consistent 15 percent throughout the whole board so the meter is consistent it's just a little on the high side and it's within plus or minus two percent and that two percent will make all the difference so I reckon these are down around 10 to nine percent because they're good and dry materials so you can see that's 13 so yeah I reckon we're not too far off if I see that come down one more percent over the next week or two it should be good to go so there we go, that's the timber that I've picked up this week. They're gonna be left in the shop now for a couple of weeks. These ones will be a few months in the shop before I get to doing the kitchen table. But the first project is gonna be that resin coffee table and that's gonna be in the next couple of weeks. So I reckon a couple of weeks time that should be nearly ready to go. The moisture level is nearly down to where it needs to be. So get yourself a little moisture meter, very, very handy to have in the shop. You can just check any timber that you're bringing in, anything you're unsure of. If you're worried it's gonna move a whole lot or how much moisture is in it, it's always handy to have one of these. And you can test the timber in your shop throughout the year to see how much moisture it's bringing in and you can see the seasonal changes in your timber and you can get all the information you need with just a handy little one of these you don't have to spend a fortune on it like I say 14 quid will do you and if you build your own kiln for drying your own timber it's handy to have one so you can check the moisture content and you know when to take your boards out so there we go upcoming projects resin table build okay so the next thing I want to talk about is the resin itself now I've been on to the guys in MID Glass Fiber Supplies. So glassfiber.ie, I linked to the website below. So I shot them an email and said, would you guys like to be involved in the project? They got back to me and said they'd be delighted. So I spoke to them on the phone. Great guys to talk to. Very, very helpful. They have training courses, the whole lot when it comes to resin, when it comes to marine stuff and the industrial side of it, they have everything. Again, I'll link the website below if you guys want to check it out. They can supply you with everything you need to do a resin table build. They have all the glass cast epoxy stuff. So you can have the deep pour stuff, the shallow pour stuff, the coat stuff they have it all they are with all the pigments and everything you need and they've sent me down a little um, kit here so this is the glass cast tree this is the coating epoxy so if you want to put a resin top 
on your timber you can do that too um, so i'm going to have a little play around with this i'll show you what i sent down i have a lot of homework and research to do on this now so i have to educate myself on how all this stuff works and then i'm going to share that with you guys so i'll take you through the whole epoxy process and how we can do a live or a river table something in that kind of style so i'm looking forward to doing that it'll be the glass cast 50 will be the stuff that i'll be using for the table that's the deep pour stuff so you can pay um, pour up to 25 millimeters at a time some um, epoxy resins you can't pour deep they just overheat the temperature that comes up in the curing process gets very very hot so you have to be very careful and be aware of what you're working with so they have all the information here so let's take a look at what they sent right so let's have a look at what the guys from mid sent me down quickly go through this again all the information will be on the website i will link it below if you guys are looking for any of these resin products so I have the glass cast tree is what they sent me on to play around with. So here's all the information on that. So this is the kind of shallower pour stuff. So for tabletops, countertops, furniture, resin, um, plank, tables, reclaimed wood, driftwood. You can do it for floors. So the penny floors. You ever see guys make those penny floors with put all the coins in and pour on? This is the stuff that they pour on that. And you have coating photographs, artworks, all that kind of stuff. So that's all the information on that. They also do the glass cast 10. So for jewellery, for pen blanks, 3D resin art countertops, water effects. So any of you guys into the wood turning, turning your own pen blanks or any of that kind of stuff, the glass cast 10, you could make your own pen blanks, any colour you want, all the mad designs. They have all the uh, dyes and stuff, so that's the stuff to go for. I will um, definitely try out some of this stuff for future wood turning projects. I'm interested in making a few pens and making my own pen blanks from this resin. That's something I'll try out as well. And um, we have the glass cast 50. This is the stuff I'll be using for the uh, river table. So this this stuff is the deep pour stuff so you can pour up to 25 millimeters per layer that's an inch per layer the countertop or the will be roughly uh, two inches depending on how we go when we're flattening the plank what we're left with so um, yeah it's going to be up to 50 mil so we're going to have to do it in two pours so this is the stuff i have to do my homework on as well and like i say everything is available on the guys website and they have videos full tutorial videos on how to use this glass cast stuff as well so let's we have a mixing stick some wet dry sandpaper they sent me down very nice we have some goggles so mixing containers with all the measurements that we need for all the different ratios, gloves, mixing sticks, spreaders. They sent me down a heap of stuff. So thanks very much, guys. Really appreciate it. That's the glass cast tree. So that's what I'm going to be playing around with now. This is the shallower pour stuff. So I'll have a practice of coloring this and mixing it up and getting used to um, setting times and stuff on mixing resin. So that will be good. There's the bottle of hardener some various lids. This is the mold release tape. So this tape is great. This, the, the resin will not stick to this tape. So anything you put this tape on, it won't stick to So you can seal your molds with this um, or put it on any part of the project that you do not want that resin to stick to. This is the stuff you need. So that's fantastic. Some more mixing cups. We have some polishing compound, I believe this is. So you can get a super clear glass finish, a uh, see-through finish with this using some polishing compound and buffing agents and buffing pads. Again, that's all stuff I have to practice with. And they sent me down two pigments. I'll give you a close-up of this now. So we have some polished gold. So this is a metallic pigment and we have some polished silver. So I'm looking forward to putting a couple of drops of this in and see what it comes out with. Like, I'll share some photos with you guys on Instagram if you're on Instagram and I'll share some on the YouTube stories as well so you guys will see when I'm playing around with this in the next few days. And we also have a little scales. Very good. So we have a little mixing scales as well they sent on. So that's amazing. So definitely go check these guys out. Like I say, they were brilliant to deal with. Really nice guys. Some of the guys, they are into carpentry themselves. So they were super enthused when I rang them on the phone. So they're really into the project and they're helping me out. So definitely go check them guys out. I will link to them below in the description. I'm going to have a play around with this stuff now. And I'll be sure to stick up some of the photos of what I come up with. And I'm really looking forward to getting on with this coffee table build. So that's the timber and that's the resin products I'm going to be using. Now the plan is to break this whole build down into a series of videos. So rather than just doing one video on doing a live edge or resin coffee table, I'm going to do an entire build series. So we're going to take a live edge slab to a finished resin table. So we're going to do everything from flattening the slab to building a nice frame with a bit of joinery in it to pouring the resin and getting the countertop perfect. So that's going to be all in individual videos. And some of you guys have asked me to go in depth into the resin and it's stuff that I have to learn know myself as well so I'll take you through that whole process so the very first video we're going to do on this is build a router sled for flattening live edge stuff so that'll be our first build I've ordered a track saw so I bit the bullet bought a track saw spent my bandsaw budget on my track saw 
So uh, that'll be here shortly. And when it does get here, we're gonna start off by building a router sled for, like I say, flattening these boards. One that I wanna be able to disassemble and pack away so it doesn't take up much room in the shop and I can take it out, reassemble it, and it should be good enough to do the large boards and the small boards. That's the kind of design remit. So I'm gonna try and design one of those. So that'll be our very first video. We'll be building the router sled. In the next video we'll take and we'll flatten the board itself, get that all ready. Then we can look at getting onto the resin stuff. So that's gonna be how we're gonna do it. And then we're gonna build a nice frame with a bit of joinery for our legs and the frame that our tabletop is gonna sit on. So that'll be another video. So we have to design something unusual. I don't wanna just go with four straight legs. So I'm thinking maybe a trapezoidal shape, something like that. And with the fact that we're using oak, we might build the legs out of oak as well. So that's the plan. So it'll all be broken down into a series of videos and we can go as in-depth as you guys want. So let me know in the comments what exactly you wanna see in this build series and we'll try and include that. Right guys, that's kind of it for this video. Again, it's kind of more of an update video. I don't have any projects to get up this week, so I just wanted to share with you what I'm doing in the shop and what we're planning for this future build. So I'm really looking forward to getting in and doing some resin work. I can't wait to have a play around with this stuff. So when I make something out of this now, I'll be sure to show the pictures of the results and you can see the kind of effects that you can achieve with this stuff. Again, go check out glassfiber.ie. I'll leave the um, link in the description below to all the guys at MID glass fiber suppliers. So it's great to have a company come on board and help me out with some of this stuff so that I can make content for you guys. And now you have a place to go if you want to build one of these tables yourself, you know exactly where to go and the guys will sort you out there. So that's kind of it. Um, nothing more to say. Oh, one more thing. I have a fateful number seven joint or plane that's now uh, superfluous to my shop. So if there's anybody in Ireland who would like this, any of you guys in Ireland who need a number seven joint or, it's not a great one, but it will do the job for you. I would be happy to post it out to you just as a way of saying thanks. Again, it's only open to people in Ireland because the postage on this would be more expensive than what the plane is worth if I was to send it anywhere else. So I don't, no problem posting it to anybody in Ireland. So if you guys, any of you guys out there who really need a, a number seven joint, and I make sure you really need it and that you're not just looking for a second one, I will get this in the post to you. So uh, shoot me an email, first person I suppose, that shoots me an email that's in Ireland and says they want it, I'll get it to them. That's the fairest way I can do it. So if you've made it to the end of the video and you want a number seven joint or plane, just shoot, shoot me an email. Um, and I'll get it out to you guys. So there you go. So that's it for now, guys. As always, thumbs up, hit subscribe if you're new here. Comments and questions below. Anything you want to know in this upcoming project, just leave comments below and I will get back to you. And I'm going to get out of here now, so take it easy.